Hey folks, here today at the ETSU Recording Laboratory with legendary guitar player Wyatt Rice, who is here. We're going to be testing out some op amps in some API gear. Wyatt, what did you bring here today? What piece of gear are we working on? The unit I got is called an A to D. The digital converter is built into the preamp. I use the digital output instead of the analog outs. You had a situation where the stock op amps, one of them started going bad just because it was getting older. There are several options out there now for people who are looking for op amps for, you know, an older out of warranty piece of gear. You yeah. can you can buy the the API factory op amps if you want, but uh, there's also guys like my friend uh, from Minnesota, Scott Liebers, who makes a few different types of op amps. We're going to try those out today. Yeah, I've heard of those, the red dots. So Yeah, he makes the red dots and the blue dots and uh, the 1731 Melkor style. His red dot style of op amps are based on the old Huntington and Melville, New York op amps. He describes them as having a slower slew rate, so they're a little bit slower in the top end than the modern uh, op amps that you would get. And then something I didn't know, the 1731 was originally designed by the Melkor company pre-API. So Saul Walker and and the guys who left Melkor, they're supposed to have a more extended top end and tighter bass. So we're just going to listen and, and see yeah. what we think about that. So right now we haven't heard them, but uh, you brought your Ovation guitar. Yeah. So, so yeah. you got to tell me about the Ovation phenomenon. You and your brother, Tony Rice, uh, he did some classic recordings like Manzanita. Uh, he played an Ovation guitar on that, right? Uh, yes, he did on that on that on that particular cut. When it comes time for us to uh, cut, you know, like a new acoustic style record, uh, Backwaters was the name of it. I went to California. Tony flew me out there, and the first thing I see when I went in his living room in his chair was he had an ovation sitting there. So I picked it up for for a minute and put it back down in the chair, and I said, "Man." I want to see your herringbone. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking so, about the Clarence White yeah, you know, yeah. legendary. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I did. Yeah. Ovation, I had a plastic, you know, bag, and I said, <laughs> man, I don't know. I, I, I want to see the D28. And But he used that mostly on Backwaters. I mean, the entire record, with the exception of two songs. Hmm. I looked back, and once in a while, I'd put that record on, and I finally decided one day, one popped up on the internet, and it got me thinking, you know what? I wonder what he seen in those guitars back then that I didn't see because I was just interested in this hearing. So I went on a search and decided I'm going to try to find one similar to what he had. And it took it took a year of study and me probably buying about seven or different eight, you know, seven or eight different ovations to find the right one. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, isn't that the way with like musicians and, yeah. and I was gear minded on, I was, people? Like you, you go down the rabbit hole as far as you can. Like yeah. we're talking about ape, we're talking about you know op amps yeah. and like the little subtleties between them, and then like ovation guitars and tried seven or eight of them. It is one of those things yeah. that you had to really get into, and I, I was determined to <laughs> to to do it. So well, I ended up keeping two of them, and I got rid of the rest. So. Well, you, the one you have today, you're going to be playing on these examples here. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to go out in the studio and yeah. try them out. And uh, what we'll be doing is between each take, we'll we'll swap out the op amps and uh, we'll tell you what they are. And yeah. hopefully hopefully we can hear some differences between them. So Looking forward to this. You ready? Yeah. All right, here we yeah. go. All right.
Well, what what did you notice between the different op amps? Uh, if I had to describe it, uh, uh, the red dot was more more like the uh, classic API to me, with the exception of maybe being a hair cleaner. Really? Uh, still had that mid-range sound, which is what I hear in, you know, in, a, in the original op amps. And the other one had a just overall, it was a little bit flatter and cleaner, maybe some uh, higher end that I heard. You're talking about the 1731 yes. Scott Lieber's yeah. version? So. Yeah. And and then like the the stock API, I don't know, to me it it sounded a little less extended in the highs, but it also had like a a high mid bite to yeah, it. Yeah, they have that they have a bite to them, so. Yeah. Uh, well, so so I think the the red dot kind of reef for, I mean for me, uh I wouldn't say e, out of the three any, either you know any of them is what you would say the best one. Mhm. They all have a unique sound, so I guess it depends on what you're looking for. But for me, if I had to choose one, I'd probably choose the red dot. So. Well, guess what? Uh-huh. I just closed up your um, your unit there, and you've got two brand new Scott Lieber's red dots in there to take oh, home with you. Hey, so. thank you so much. Absolutely, man. man. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much. go ahead and visit thank Scott Lieber's online at the link below, and uh, of course, always you want to check out. East Tennessee State University's Bluegrass Old Time and Country Music Studies, you can go to www.etsu.edu slash bluegrass. Yeah. And you can get to work every week with your guitar hero, Wyatt Rice, or any other great faculty that we have here. So thanks to yes, Ben Bateson, our recording lab manager, for helping us set up the session today. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see you all down the line. Absolutely.